Hey everybody, uh, this is a little different video for this feed. Instead of being strictly about movies, it's actually about video games in a way, but it is related to a movie and that is The Intergalactic Adventures of Max Cloud, which is a new release, uh, which is video game related. Um, and the movie has a couple of members of the team that we interviewed recently and you should be able to find that plus some other information uh, linked below in our comments here. Uh, if you want to get more information about that and other movies, uh, check out Find Your Film, uh, or you can also check out um, Deepest Dream or Find Your Scene, which is what Greg Strzavosti runs. He's the third member of Find Your Film. Anyway, today we are going to talk about, as a related topic, our five favorite 90s video games. And that's because Max Cloud, I think if I remember correctly, takes place at the beginning of the 90s. I think it's like 91, maybe 92, when the characters are actually occurring. Even though the video game they're playing is like kind of an 8-bit style, these may not all be 8-bit. It's just going to be whatever we liked. And kind of, for some of you, it's going to be nostalgia. For others, it might be, I've never heard of that game. Or, oh yeah, that game originally came out then. Um, anyway, could be kind of fun. So, hello, Eric. <laughs> Hello, Bruce. How's it going? <laughs> Good. I feel like we just talked. So, uh, Eric, so were you much of a gamer in the 90s, or have you ever been much of a gamer, or kind of what's your history with video games? Yeah, uh, I played uh, mostly Nintendo, uh, oh. Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Uh, there was one, we won't get into it on our list because it's well before the, the 90s era, but there was an Atari game that I absolutely loved called Kaboom. Mm -hmm. You had the little, uh, uh, not a joystick, but it's a little roller. And you yes. just move this guy back and forth catching bombs. And it, that was one of my favorites. And unfortunately, it won't make this list because it's right. well before well before the 90s. But uh, I kind of, you know, kind of fell off around my PlayStation 3 era is about where I started to kind of fall off on it. I'll play once in a while. Like I'll play the Bloodstain or any Zelda game that comes out. Uh, but for the most part, I'm not not that into uh, video yeah. games these days. Not to sound like the old guy in the room, but they nope. all seem to be first person shooters, and those aren't my thing. Well, I'm the older guy in the room, so <laughs> so that's fine. Yeah. So uh, so that other guy in the room. that other Atari game was 2600. Is that Atari 26? Like original Atari? They're all they're all Ataris to me. I have no idea. Was it the one? Okay, the one that had like the rubberized joystick with a single red button on it, and then another joystick that was just a circle. Like a dial, does that sound right? The okay, so the the um, controller I used was the dial, mm -hmm. but it wasn't mine. It was a uh, neighbor's okay. house is where I played it. So it it wasn't even my game system. We just went over and it was like, we're gonna play Kaboom, cool. <laughs> that sounds like the original one, which had two kinds of uh, controllers. Which the less used controller was that round one. The most the more used controller was just a, was literally a joystick with a red button, and that's all yeah. it was. Um, but that was the 2600. So I actually played, so I'm old enough that of course I remember going to arcades when all they were, were actual, like, um, like physical arcade games. Most of them were like, you know, like pinballs, but a lot of them were like shooting games where you shot like, you know, actual balls, like into like a screen. <laughs> it was weird. I don't know how to describe it, but, um, but I played back then on an actual console, uh, pong like we actually put money in for pong and then there was another yeah. one it was like it was like lunar lander or something where you literally were just trying to land this little dot version of a spacecraft on the surface of the moon but um yeah but yeah i played those early ones and i was a weird one in the 90s and that i didn't have any of the nintendos in 90s until nintendo 64 uh but i played either pc games or i played um eventually got into some of the other consoles. So that'll be make our, probably make our variety a little interesting on like which ones we played. So yeah. I will start with the first one. And then Real we'll quick. Just, the, yes. I, I, I wanted to do a quick, uh, one quick uh, back in the day sort of thing. Mm -hmm, um, this sure. is kind of a fun story. My yeah. friend, um, and I don't know where they got this, but it was on the regular Nintendo, the NES. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I believe it was a black cartridge and uh you put it in and it had like 50 games on it and i think what it was was someone and i don't know this for sure but i think someone that uh maybe one of the parents friends or something 
worked it did like play testing maybe so mm. it like had all these games it hasn't even come out yet some of them are old some of them are haven't even come out yet some of them never came out um but we would go there and we'd just play all these different games so i'd go back to school and it's like dude i played this game it had 50 games on and they're like you're a damn liar i'm like no it's still the- <laughs> that sounds cool and of course you can you couldn't buy it because as far as i know it wasn't and maybe it was something you could buy i don't think it was i think it was just like a demo like a demo cartridge or something that but sounds, yeah that that was uh sounds similar to something called i remember there's something called game shark do you remember that it was like a disc no, or something game shark that, yeah game shark was what you put into that that was cheat codes I that's think. what i thought okay okay yeah, that I don't remember that, but it sounds like something like you're talking about. It sounds like a demo or like a maybe like beta, like a beta thing for them to test games out or to beta test games. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think that's what it was. And actually, no, the Game Sharks a company that makes like the uh, third, uh, like the uh, controllers and what third party controllers. Game mm-hmm. Genie is the cheat code one. Game maybe Genie. they have a Game Shark one you're too. Right. I, I don't know. That reminds me for a little while for PC, and this is very, this didn't last very long for obvious reasons. There was a store that near us that used to rent, like rent PC video games. So of course they all, <laughs> so people would go home and they would just copy all the discs and then take the games back. And then you had whatever game was out at that time on disc. So that didn't work very well for That's... people. Yeah. And that's PC, personal computer, not politically correct games, right? Well, they, yeah, I don't know if they were probably very, not very politically correct. There might have been a few that were. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get into this. on the screen. I don't know how it can be politically incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I will start. Um, I will start with my first game, and then we'll just kind of work our way through it. I think mine are right. kind of chronological, just happened to work out that way, but I don't think that's necessary. Um and for whatever reason, I forgot to write down the date on one of them. But uh, the first one I had was from 1993. Uh, and I don't know if you ever played any of the Ultima games. Ultima, if you remember, if you've ever heard of it or not, Ultima was kind of like the OG um, D&D video games. Ultima were them. They don't really exist anymore, but that was before Skyrim and before, you know, all that stuff. Ultima was out. And Ultima Underworld 2 from 1993. Oh, Ultima Under, Underworld 2 Labyrinth of Worlds. I had to look it up. Um, believe it, the sequel is better than the original, but that was some of the very first um, first person 3D dungeon crawlers. So this is like one of the very first games where, you know how you think of now, you're like going and playing like, I don't know, Skyrim or whatever those games are. And you go around, and you, can, you can use your mouse or whatever. You can pick up items. You can add your inventory. You can change your swords and your armor. It has a little icon of your guy and you can change what he's wearing on his legs and his chest and his helmets and all that stuff. This was one of the first games that ever did that. Where you're like, you're walking along, you kill some creature and then you find something and you pick it up gold or food or whatever. So I remember when I played that and now I'm sure it looks very rudimentary. You could probably find a speed play and someone plays the whole game in like, you know, 45 minutes. But when I played it, it took me days and it was super awesome. And I was down in dungeons and you went through a crystal and you went through different worlds and it was really cool. So Ultima Underworld 2 Labyrinth of Worlds. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, most of mine are uh, most of mine are going to be stuff that you know nothing too deep cuts. So I'll start with the deep cuts one. That's and my only deep cut. One. Don't worry, that's my only deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I, I, unless he grew up in the two thousands, then maybe all these are deep cuts. Who knows? True. But uh, yeah, um, one of this is to this day. This is still one of my favorite games, and uh, it's a baseball game. I always like baseball games on the NES and super nes and uh which is funny because i hate watching baseball but for some reason baseball (laughs) games are fun to me yeah but like i played uh like the rbi baseball american baseball all stars i remember playing that and you could act like they didn't have the actual um real people's names but you could type their names in so like oh i could play as ryan sandberg even though wink wink it's not really ryan sandberg right but uh uh the game i picked is a baseball game kind of it's a baseball game with robots and it's called Base Wars. So it plays <laughs> nice. exactly it plays exactly like baseball, 
with robots and they, uh, they have a, a different type of robots with different strengths and weaknesses and whatnot. Um, but it's just like a baseball, except for when you're out. But when you're out, you're not out. Now it goes onto a fight screen. And the, <laughs> if, the, if, the person, if the person on the outfield uh, kills you, you're out. If you kill them, you're safe. And this move or this this game is so fun, and it it still holds up to this day, even on the eight bit. But this move or movie, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trained with finder film. But this game is uh, absolutely ripe for a remake. It's fun on that it's fun on awesome. the original Nintendo, and you could absolutely remake this today. And I think I I don't know why no one has. Maybe it's like a rights thing. But you don't need to call it base words. You can no. call it whatever you want. And just yeah, you just keep concept. the concept. Yeah, and then so because you get two things out of one, you get a you get a fighting game and a and a sports game. Yeah. Plus, Double so when you played game, it, was that a, was that a two person game at that point, or was it one person against you against a computer? Yeah. Uh, both. It, it's oh, yeah. two player, but you can also play against a computer, or you can play computer against computer. Although I, I know people <laughs> do it. I don't. I to this day I don't understand why, but they do. I want to play that game now. That sounds awesome. That sounds yeah, really cool. It's pretty sweet. That reminds me of, I don't forget who it was. It might've been George Carlin or some famous comedian had this whole bit where he would go on about how he hated baseball. He thought it was boring and how you could make it interesting. And it was all this crazy stuff like that, you know, like in real baseball where you like, there you go. Remake the game and call it George Carlin's baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Instead in of Bill robots, <laughs> Instead of robots, just have human characters and do it like straight up, like a like gladiator style. Yeah, yeah. Or make it Bill and Ted's um, baseball through time, and every, you got to fight different things through time while you play baseball. <laughs> then you have licensing issues again. Oh well, but you know. All right, my now we get into all my non um, um, obscure hits um, from 1996. I have two from 1996. That was a big year for me. So I had gone all the way to 1996 without a console since the early Atari days. So I went for, I don't know, maybe 10 years without a console. And um, then I was finally convinced to get the PlayStation 1 because we used to be, that's another thing. We used to be able to rent. You could go to a video game store, rent a PlayStation 1 for a couple nights and a game. And I forget how much it cost. It was like, I don't know, five, six bucks, something like that, which is crazy because they're giving you like a hundred just in dollars machine. Uh, but I played, we played this game and we liked it so much. We didn't want to keep renting the game system. So we just went and bought the game system so we could play the game. Um, and that was the original Resident Evil 1 uh, Biohazard, I guess, if you're in Japan. Uh, and that was just, that was it, man. We were... We were sold on that game. We loved that game. I'm assuming you probably played that game at some point in your life. Yeah, um, I'm get well. It, it's it's real weird to go back to those games now because yeah. like at the time the graphics, at least to me, were like whoa, especially during the cutscenes. Um, I'm yes. guessing you remember the part where you first see the zombie. He turned around. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it turns around like that. And I'm like, hand the control. Why don't you take over from here? I'll just I'll just watch. <laughs> So I guess, I, I guess maybe I, I said I don't understand why computer would play computer. Resident Evil is a perfect example of uh, I would much rather watch someone play the game than actually play the game myself. Yeah. That, so, so me, even more than the graphics of that game, was it was the first time, it was one of the first third-person games I'd played. And I thought the gameplay was so surprising. It was one of the first games where I actually had a jump scare that scared me, like the first time you walk down the hallway and the dogs jump through the windows at you. It was like, oh! And then the first time that you think you've killed a zombie and you haven't and you have to stomp their head to, to kill them for real. So stuff like that in that game really blew me away. And then I thought that the actual story was really, even though you had to do all that backtracking and you know find the gem to put in the statue to blah, 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 that kind of was boring. But every time you went to a new place and they just kind of kept the story interesting, you went downstairs and there was a shark. I was like, I never expected a shark in this zombie game. That was really cool. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. So um, it was a lot of fun. Before you saw Zombie 2? Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> I had seen Zombie 2, but I guess I didn't expect it in this mansion-based zombie game. It wasn't an island involved. <laughs> All right, what do you got next, Ben? Well, I guess I'll, I'll just uh, stick with the yearly there and go with Silent Hill. 
Um, yes. Very similar. Almost exactly the same as Resident Evil. The And I loved Resident Evil. But where Resident Evil kind of falls off for me is the further you go into it, the horror goes away and it becomes science fiction. Yes. Uh, because it's not, oh, we're not dealing with zombies. We're dealing with genetically enhanced whatevers. And the virus. So it kind of, it kind of, yeah, it kind of loses some of its dread for me. But Silent Hill, holy crap! <laughs> mm-hmm. That like uh, that, that it goes full on Jacob's Ladder throughout the or David Lynch throughout the the whole thing, and then just keeps getting weirder and weirder as it goes. And uh, I, I mean, I would pick the first one since that's the '90s. I think I don't know when the the second one's probably story wise, it's the best one because that they're. Mm-hmm. Also, like Resident Evil, they're hard to play because they got those, they call them the tank controls. Yes. Um, I guess they finally fixed that in Resident Evil with Resident Evil 4 where you can actually move like a normal human would probably You don't just like, like turn, like swivel and stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like those, uh, as an experience, it, as gameplay, it sucks. Like it, it sucks playing like that. But as an experience, it totally works because you can't just run away from the zombie. Like it's, it, it almost uh, mimics uh, both with Resident Evil and with Silent Hill. It almost mimics your body faculties not working correctly because you're so scared. You're just trying yes. to get out of there. And all you got to do is turn and run, but you can't because you're just panicking too much. Yes. Well, and then Silent Hill, if I remember correctly, because um, it also really played with the whole like flashlight and the ability to see everything was really like, was really yeah. like, kept down a little bit in that one and then also yeah. the soundtrack the soundtrack and the sound oh, effects yeah. in silent hill were like super creepy and weird and, and like i think really amped up the the tension more than resident evil did i thought so that was really yeah. cool then the that in the uh with silent hill it wasn't monster after monster after monster a lot of the, there was a lot of quiet time in there mm-hmm. and for a game like that when it has the potential of you know, when you watch a horror movie and it's quiet for a long time, you start to get nervous because it's like, oh, okay, when's the jump scare coming? <laughs> when you're playing a game, it kind of heightens that even more. It's like, I haven't fought a fucking monster in a long time. Where the hell? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, and what, you know it's on? coming. And and then like even when the uh, even when the monsters do pop out, it's not even so much a monster pops out. It just gets like the story gets really weird and mm-hmm. kind of uh, almost dreamlike or nightmare like. And yeah, just uh, I think Silent Hill is a good example of taking something that Resident Evil was already doing really well and just takes it up another couple notches. Yeah, it takes it much more, like you said, in the surreal, creepy like land, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. That is definitely a good choice. And it was close to making my list. My other my next one is also on PlayStation one. And that was Tomb Raider. The original Tomb Raider from 1996. Now, you go back and look at it now, it looks very blocky. (laughs) But at the time, (laughs) um, it was the first time... This is kind of the opposite of what we talked about with um, Resident Evil, where the controls were very, like, locked down, and you can only pretty much go turn, go forward, turn, go forward. This was the first game where you had a character they could do all kinds of weird stuff, you know, shoot with two guns and jump and somersault and climb things and leap across things and hang on them and all that stuff. And also it, it, it had, um, it was pretty hard because it did not have a lot of save spots, which was really good. Um, and it was one of those games that um, the scope of the rooms were really big or the, the, the locations was really big. And I remember that was one of those weird games where, you keep climbing and eventually you'd look down and the, and the, the room was so giant that if you fell, you'd be falling and you fell a lot in that game and died a lot in that game. You'd fall, you know, felt like hundreds of feet. Uh, so I thought that at the time, and it was the closest thing to an Indiana Jones game that was out at the time that was good, you know? So I think it really, uh, it really filled a lot of niches and, and did some things that games hadn't really done much until then, which probably was what made it really popular. Um, and of course it kind of, went down diminishing returns as it went but it was a lot of fun when it first came out um i guess i will go with uh and i'm sure no one's heard of this game ever this this is probably the most deep cuts i'll get have you heard of a game called mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> mortal Kombat. uh 
But I wouldn't. I, I don't know what I can add to the thing of Mortal Kombat. Uh, more so, um, the uh, Mortal Kombat's a great example of a game, and, and it's a fun fighting game. But more so, I I miss uh, going to the arcades back in the day, and there would always be the person selling like sheets with the fatalities on them. Yeah. Um, so, because like like Mortal Kombat Two is probably uh, of the two, Mortal Kombat Two is probably the best one, and uh, you know people come up and the game would come out, but no one knew what the fatalities were yet because the game just came out. Right. And unless you were just dumping quarters in all the time, you had to just kind of hope you figured it out. But some people did, and so it was always fun to go there and watch people fight, and then someone wins, and then they don't know the fatality, and it's like, oh, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> let the other guy win he knows how to do the fatality <laughs> yes um but then it finally came out on uh the super nintendo and the genesis and i i have the super nintendo so it was like the bloodless one but it, it was still fun uh being able to just kind of play over and over that that i think was the first time because it was kind of that way with the turtles in time uh mm-hmm. the home version wasn't quite the same as the, the arcade version but mortal Kombat was the first time i remember that or Street Fighter was the first time I remember playing a game at home that felt like it did in the arcade. And right, so and yeah, that was the, there's that definitely was the, a lot of. No, go ahead. That was I was gonna say that was one of the big difference as they started getting better, like the consoles got better. All of a sudden, the arcade games and the home games started becoming almost the same, which was really crazy. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's kind of. I mean, you still have the. I think nostalgia kind of keeps a couple of. Uh, arcades afloat but it, it was kind of sad seeing arcades die um although i i completely understand why but then you know you you look at it as uh oh wow this is convenient i can play these games at home now not thinking of the community that you lose as a result of that yeah. and now we're now we're watching that happen with movie theaters although it's so true movie theaters you don't usually talk to people but there's still there's still that that public element to it and I think, uh, you know, we're watching theaters die now. So I guess it's kind of timely that we talk about it. And uh, we don't know exactly what we're missing until it's gone. And then you look back at it with rose colored glasses. Go, yeah, those were good times, actually. Yeah, I remember going yeah, to the Mortal arcades. Too. Yeah, going to the arcades and like you put your quarter up on there or you line up your quarters and, you know, people would take turns. And then there's always that one dude who could just keep playing. And you're like, oh, man that asshole's got the game right now. <laughs> like I'm stuck watching this yeah. dude. But then again, you got to go see part of the game that you could ever make. So on top of that, it, if uh, you get to the point where you finally beat that guy, it's like, mm-hmm. took me out. I can't, I, I climbed the mountain. I well, and that was the, the thing where you'd put your, you know, you'd have your initials up there. So it was kind of your bragging rights. If you were taught, you know, good enough yeah. to get in the top. Well, usually it was the top 10. I think that they'd be up on the video on the, screen there so you'd have your initials a couple times and you'd be like yes i was number six or whatever so that was always a thing too. yeah my initials were my initials were either die fuck f-u-k or six, yeah. six, six. of course <laughs> why wouldn't they be <laughs> it's like wow six 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 so there's 13 of them and i don't remember winning any of these <laughs> that's awesome um so my next one is uh i think my last two are actually pc games um i didn't write down the year on this one but i think it might have been around 97 or 98 and that was um duke nukem 3d duke nukem 3d um that game we played the hell out of that game because it was like doom it was felt like doom as far as the way it kind of ran and it had similar graphics, but slightly better. But it was so much like, um, it was the first time when you felt like you were playing one of those, like, uh, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger or that one of those kick-ass action movies. And you had a character that was actually interesting. And he had all the, he said all the things in the, the game all the way along. Like, you know, I for, you know, I didn't say groovy and stuff, but he was almost like Ash in a sense. Like he had all the smart ass remarks. Um, and it had like um, almost semi nudity, so it was almost a little bit like risque. So there's that aspect of it. I mean, you probably remembered playing this. I assume you played it at some point. Yeah. And then um, the other thing it had, and I don't know if you ever played this, but it had multiplayer. 
and it was PC. And if you could somehow link up to your friend's computer, you could actually play against each other in death matches. And that was one of the very first games I ever played death matches in kind of like our, their standard now, you know, that you play online you play against people on whatever it is, but it was one of the first times I ever played that. And it had great things like it. I don't know if you remember, it had a shrink ray. You could shoot somebody and they were, they became tiny. And then if you were the person that became tiny, you'd watch the other Duke Nukem getting ready to step on you and stuff. It was super fun. Yeah, I, I had a couple, knew a couple of people that could do that stuff with the uh, uh, online stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's prevalent now. It's almost required now. But back then, that to me, that was like, oh, that's just computer programmer stuff. I would have to go to college for 18 years to know how to do something like that. I don't even remember how we did it now. I don't know if we took a, a, our PCs to each other's house and actually connected them. I can't even remember anymore. It had to have been, or that it was like a super rudimentary internet kind of a deal. Um, but we somehow did it because I remember doing it with, with my friend and it was, was really fun. Uh, and I was kind of like, you know, you're kind of getting this glimpse into the future of gaming because you knew that if other people could do that, it would be the best ever, you know, if you could find people and play with yeah. them like that. So that was the one that kind of hit me is Duke Nukem 3D. And then I don't think it ever did too much great after that. I think they made a few other games after that that weren't, that weren't much to talk about. So, Yeah. Hmm? yeah that is a good one. And I'm uh, trying to think of what my next one's going to be. I got a couple ideas. I'll, I guess I'll just go with the, the – I mean, this one was a, another PlayStation 1 game. And uh, they've re- remade it recently. And it's, uh, it's called Odd World basically a puzzle game yes um and it, it was between this and mist and because miss mm. is they're kind of they're kind of in the same ballpark um where their uh odd world looks like a side scroller and it is but it's a puzzle because yes. you can't just run and shoot people you you have to do certain things at a certain time otherwise you get killed and uh, Miss is kind of similar in that, that you're just walking around. Miss was really cool to me because when it came out, that was like one of the first games I saw where it's like, this is like real life. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, it was beautiful. And, At that time, it was like, wow, they can actually get that on your computer. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Um, but uh, Odd World kind of had the same, same similar mechanics in that it's a puzzle, but it's a lot more fun. I like the characters and the uh, uh, kind of... Uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it? Uh, it was kind of like the George Romero, what he did with the zombies is kind of what they were doing with odd world on, on the surface. It looks like something, but there's like something a little deeper that the, the game makers are trying to say, and mm-hmm. that there's a bit of art to that. And then, you know, it, there's always been the, uh, the, the argument of whether or not video games are art or not. And, on on its surface, it isn't because it's just do the thing, and you know there's not much uh, not much artistic merit to it. But with it, you know, you can also subvert that. And I think Odd mm-hmm. World's a good example of something that does. It's it's telling you, it's giving you ideas and telling you a story without just being upfront about it. And, right. So and it's and it's a fun ass puzzle game too. Yeah, no, it is. I, I haven't played the original ones, but I remember playing, um, I think on the very first edition of Xbox, they had Abe, Abe's Odyssey, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. Yeah. Um, which was a lot of fun too. And similar, similarly, it had a lot of um, puzzle solving where you had to get, get, get your characters places and you had to solve puzzles to make that happen. Um, I was going to say on the art, on the art issue, to me, it's always like the equivalent of anything, right? Movies, you can say, well, movies can be art, you know, quote art with a capital A, or they can just be fun yeah. entertainment. So I don't see yeah. why, I don't think, see how they're any different than that. Or books, people, people elevate books as like, you know, literature. It's like, no, most books are junk. You know, most books are like romance novels and yeah. just, you know, they're just entertainment. Whereas there's some books that are great art. So any, I think any art form has, all that range you know what i'm saying and there's no reason that video games can't be just the same and people i I guess the i guess where i make the distinction with the art is that uh something like tetris i don't see that as an artistic achievement it's right rudimentary this is these are the rules this is what you need to win and this is what you do to yeah you know these are the moves you can make 
there's there's no subtext to Tetris. There's no story to Tetris. There's nothing to Tetris other than the rudiments of the game, and that's all it is. Right. Um, and then you get something like uh, um, oh, uh, Shadow, uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Yes. You know, it's it's it, it, it's very subversive. Very, it doesn't come right out and tell you the story, but there's there's uh, feelings and themes and stuff in there, and the rudiments is the game how you move the characters but it goes beyond that and it 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 gives you a gives you a certain feeling and you know uh it goes well beyond just the mechanics of the game itself absolutely or even like people got into in people got into like um you know final fantasy 7 or something where all of a sudden you have characters that you follow all the way through and the characters actually kind of build up a little bit characters die yeah. um even um some of the Zelda games are pretty fantastic, I think, and beautiful and fun. Coming up. <laughs> yeah. So, so I would say, um, I would say uh, that's to me, that's like I said, entertainment has the whole range and the range yeah. comes in a different form in video games, but the range is still, still applies. You know, there's just the straight base level entertainment, um, you know, and I guess the very, very rudimentary video games are the equivalent of like, um, I don't know, like a choose your own adventure book for kids or something, or maybe a, yeah. a puzzle book or something, you know, where it's still a book, but it's just puzzles, you know, whereas yeah. you get to the other end of it and it's, you know, high, fine literature, you know? So I think that that's and all. It, and there's nothing wrong with it. Tetris is a great game. Yeah. Pac-Man is a great game. Tic-Tac-Toe is yeah, I mean, it's easy, but Tic-Tac-Toe is very simple sure. and elegant in its design. And there's nothing wrong with that, um, but I just wouldn't call those art. And I could yeah. be wrong about this. I, I I just see those as stuff like that as rudimentary gameplay. It's, yes. it's created for a specific purpose, and that purpose is to win or lose. Whereas you get other games that are, you know, little, you know, hit more gray areas, and just some go just straight out, just balls out, right? Uh, you know. Like Some have like more philosophical aspects example. to it. They have actual like visual artistic aspects to it. They have characters, they have a story. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot more going on there for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess for my last one, I don't think I have any that really <laughs> qualify quite as art. So I kind of failed on that one. But um, my last one is definitely one of my favorite all time games. That's from 1998. It's a PC version. Uh, and that is the original Half-Life. Um, I loved the original Half-Life so, so very much. I, we even have it on my PC now, and I've gone and played it fairly recently. It's, you know, it doesn't look near, near as good, but it's still a hell of a lot of fun. And this was, and I don't know if you've ever played the original Half-Life. You probably played Half-Life 2 at some point in your life, I would assume. Um, but it was one of the first games. Uh, that, I think. Yeah. Have you? Oh yeah, I I think I played like a demo disc or something. I I never really got into Half Life. I played it, but not. I didn't really dive deep into it. Yeah, this was one of the first ones where I mean, it did it did it had the great aspects of a fun shooter with monsters and kind of uh, the three dimensional world, but it also had a story. I mean, for example, it's one of the first ones where it started out and you were doing the opening credits of the game was you on a kind of like a tram, like a like a transport tram and at, it's slowly going through the entire complex until the very end, until you get down to the laboratory and you can, you can move your character's view around and look at the whole complex as you're flowing through it. And the, the credits are going. And the cool thing about it is you're seeing the entire complex that you're eventually going to have to escape from as the game goes on. And I thought that was really great. And just the whole, the whole concept at the very beginning is you meet a, you know, you meet a scientist, he goes and tells you what's going on. And you're just a just a grunt, basically, a nobody, and all hell breaks loose, and the whole place explodes. You you momentarily like phase into an alternate dimension, and then when you wake up, you have nothing but a crowbar. And that a game it was one of the first games I caught where you started out with nothing, and this has kind of become a common thing in a lot of games. You start out with nothing, and you have to slowly work your way up to weapons or whatever powers that you're going to have you know here you literally start out with a crowbar and you're working your way out of this institute um a ton of fun really creative gameplay uh fun funny characters like in the opening scenes you have tons of people like just you'll see somebody and then they'll just like 
like in the distance, they'll just fall to their death or get eaten by, you know, killed by some crazy alien. You know, it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun. All right. So uh, what, we got one left. You're in your last one, dude. All right. So I, you know, I was going to go uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Link to the Past, but mm-hmm. everyone knows about that. And I, um, you know, the, the go fetch, get this to get this to unlock this thing go on that but there's another and uh actually uh simon's quest did a similar thing castlevania simon's quest mm-hmm. and even symphony of the night um on the playstation one did the same thing and bloodstain just recently came out uh but there was another game on the nes and this might not be 90 so i could be cheating here but you already know those games so we don't need to talk them to death even more so yes. I'm going to go hipster on you. And uh, there's a game that came out on the NES called Rygar. Have you I've heard, heard of it? it. I never played it, but I've heard of it. So that one's very similar. It's a side scroller, but it's also top down. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of similar to a, a, not a link to the past, but uh, Simon's quest or mm-hmm. not Simon's quest. Uh, the second, second legend of Zelda legend of Zelda two. Um, so you're Rygar, you do the side scrolling, but then you go on a top down map and walk around and it's mm-hmm. it's uh it's very similar to uh the ones i mentioned link to the past and uh simon's quest where you don't just go from one stage to the next you have to you know find this find this uh amulet that unlocks this this uh dungeon that you find another thing that unlocks this that gives you a power up so you can get across a bridge so on and so forth until yes you finally get to the end boss and defeat them um there's been a lot of games like rygar uh i could be wrong uh, rygar might not even be the first one in fact um i, I think zelda uh two probably did this before i i'm not a game historian man i don't know, <laughs> I mean, I don't either, know man. we're kind of but, out of uh, element we're a little bit better on movies but we're doing our best here yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah right Ry- rygar actually i just played this on uh uh played this on the nintendo switch it was on the uh what do you call it? The Nintendo, the NES thing on the Nintendo switch. Yeah. So I you have can, to look for that. We have that too. And you can get old games on there. Yeah. 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 So you can find it on there and it, you know, if you like the Zelda games, especially the first one in uh link to the past, this has all those elements, uh, the side scroll. I think where this one beats Zelda two is cause Zelda two side scrolling gameplay. Isn't that good. Like right. I, I like the idea of like fetching different things and finding different things like you do in all those other games. Yes. But the side scrolling is very fun. The side scrolling in Rygar is like, it's really fun. It, it's kind of, kind of similar to super Mario brothers where it's mm-hmm. just real intuitive. Uh, and plus you get your weapon. And so that's it's challenging. You know, the, and the it's shield, like, yeah, yeah. The Yo-Yo shield thing. Yes. And yeah, Rygar, Rygar is just one of those uh, kind of mash em ups, but it does everything really well. Yep. Kind of like gremlins. <laughs> yes gremlins <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think that brings us to the end of our of our 90s top five <laughs> 90s games that might not be from the 90s but we're not sure so but hey <laughs> if you enjoyed this definitely check our uh, the link below um check out find your film check out what we uh did with um uh, max cloud and also if you have your own suggestions for your favorite 90s video games there's so many i mean there's many that we probably both like too that we didn't list i know there are some that i didn't list um we'd love to hear it and um check us out on find your film and yeah i was just saying more importantly if you have ideas for games that uh we should check out especially older older ones yeah uh be a good idea to tell us where to find them <laughs> Yes. Unlike movies, find it, finding games and where finding games is easy. Like saying games is easy. Finding where you can actually play them may be a little more difficult. But oh. if you know, hey. And if you know what that giant cartridge of games was that Eric talked about, if you know more about that, I'm sure there's someone out there that knows a lot about that. I'd like to hear more about that. I bet you would too. Yeah. Cool. There were definitely 50 of them. 50 for sure. That, that's one thing I do remember about that. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thanks, Eric. Uh, this was a fun little thing, that little aside, and uh, we will talk to you all soon in a more movie-related uh, subject matter and environment. But hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Bye.